Hey scrapbookers, I'm Trisha Morris at Club Scrap and welcome to the Farm Critters Remix Page Kit Workshop. In this video, I will teach you how to turn the Farm Critters Remix Page Kit into eight really beautiful pages. We will take the time to trim all the papers together and file them as we go. And then we'll dry fit them onto the page bases. And by dry fit, I just mean organize it without adhering anything. And from there, you should be able to take it away, uh, add your adhesive, uh, your own photos and journaling and memories to these really, really fun pages. So let's get started. I've already gone ahead and printed a copy of the instructions and um, you should be able to find a link to the instructions on your packing list uh, that's included in the kit. I also will set aside all of the things that came in the kit other than the paper. So that includes the really fun ribbon, the black tags. Um, there should be a set of four or five of these. I can't remember how many, I think four are included. And then we've got these cute little hello words and then some adorable charms. So the first thing I like to do each time before I begin to trim the papers in a collection is place the paper in the order in which it will be cut. So we'll just grab the entire stack of paper that came in the kit and I like to just hold it in the crook of my arm so that I can access it and see it all very easily. And um, we will first find two, three, all three sheets, three sheets of the beautiful blue plane included in your kit. So one, two, three, all three of them will trim. And then one piece of this <laughs> adorable animal print. You can't help but smile when you look at that. I want you to put that face down on your trimmer base. Then there's another print. It's just adorable um, the, of the mosaic tiles here. We're going to turn that face down on your trimmer, just one of them. And then I want you to find just one sheet of the red plain, one sheet of up, oh, rather two sheets of black plain. So two pieces of black plain. If I'm going too fast for you, just simply press pause until you dig up what you're looking for. Then we're going to find the cut aparts that are in your kit. And that includes a sheet of these fun uh, border strips, as well as one other sheet of images. So we'll put those face down on your trimmer base. Next, go ahead and find the other mosaic print. Put that face down and a black plane, followed by two green planes. Next, how about two red planes? It should be getting easier to find these because we have much fewer to sort through. Then one green and finally one print face down. That's everything sort of in order, so that's why we did it face down, so we can flip everything over and get right back to the blue where we started, and that's where we're going to begin our trimming. So speaking of trimming, I'm using a Fiskars trimmer. I really love this particular model. The blade is self-sharpening, so it's always nice and sharp because I'm always using this daily throughout my day. And then here I have Club Scraps Accordion Pocket File Organizer. So if you don't have this, um, just make sure you have space so that you can create four piles for all of the pieces we're creating. The way we do this here at Club Scrap is, is every time we do our trimming for a project, we do all the trimming at once so that we can focus our efforts on other things once the trimming is over. And we will be using measurements. Make sure that you don't use the centimeters across the top, but the second row of numbers on this trimmer are your inches. Okay, let's take that first blue plane and we're going to make a couple of cuts. I encourage you to allow the paper to pile up to the right of the trimmer blade without moving it until I direct you to do so. That helps us stay organized and on the same page. And our first cut's at 11 and 3 quarters. So when you find that number, always go to the left of the original uh, whole number. So 11, 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half, 11 and 3 quarters. A common mistake is to go the other direction. <laughs> Next, I want you to cut it 10 and a half. So 10, 10 and a quarter, 10 and a half. Just a review, if it's been a while since you measured. And then six and a quarter. Now rotate this large piece in the trimmer base and we'll cut it eight and a half. As a reminder, always push on this clear bar before you make a cut. That keeps the paper from buckling. Then slide down to four and a quarter. Take the two rectangles you just made that are the same size and file them in pocket or pile for layouts one and two. And then this other narrow strip goes in pocket seven and eight. Pick up the next larger strip. This is four and a quarter by 12 right now. We'll cut that at six and a quarter, 
file this piece in pocket five and six and this shorter one in pocket one and two. Next, we'll take this strip, this larger one, seven and eight, and the smaller one goes in three and four. You'll happily see here that there are absolutely no scraps involved yet at this point um, with that blue sheet of paper, and now it's time to grab your next one. So this one is trimmed differently. It's nice and easy. We'll cut at six, then rotate and cut at eight. I should have started with this one, <laughs> and four. Okay, gather up. You made three pieces that are the same size, right? So take two of them and put them in pocket three and four. The other, seven and eight. Now I'm going to take the other six by 12 strip that we created. We'll cut horizontally at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Okay, you just made three pieces that are exactly the same size. They all go in pocket five and six, as does this little guy. Put him in five and six too. Okay, one more blue plane. And for if you're trying to follow along, um, we are now on step three of our instructions. This is page two. And if I'm going too fast for you and you're watching this on YouTube, there is a little gear button or a settings button. You can control the speed of my uh, speech and of the video. So if you want to slow me down, try 0.75 or maybe even 0.5. And then you might be able to feel more comfortable with my pace. As you do this trimming uh, with me regularly, it'll get faster and faster and you'll keep up with me live, no problem. Okay, let's trim this next one at eight and a half. <laughs> and four and a quarter. Rotate this four and a quarter and we'll trim at six and a quarter. Take this six and a quarter inch piece and that goes in pocket three and four. This one, one and two. Pick up the very next strip that fell and it's four and a quarter by 12 right now. We'll trim at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. You just made three rectangles that should be and are <laughs> the same size. Those go in pocket three and four. And there is this little guy right here. He goes in one and two. The next piece will trim horizontally at eight and a half and four and a quarter. Two of the pieces are the same size, one and two. The other square goes in pocket five and six. And still, after trimming three sheets of blue paper, there are no scraps to be found. Now we have this really fun animal print. Yes, we are gonna trim it and we will we'll be fine. <laughs> Let's trim this at eight inches. Ah, that wasn't so bad. Both of these pieces go into pocket five and six. And when I place those in the pocket, um, I just do it at an angle so that uh, I can still see the numbers on the left side here. I'm moving on now to the next page, page three, to trim the mosaic print. First cut is at nine and three quarters, and then seven. Gather up this largest piece and the next one next to it on your pile. Um, this is the two and three quarter by 12. Both of these go in pocket three and four, once again at an angle so you can still see the pocket number. And this last strip, seven and eight. Now let's move on to the red plane. We just have three more to go, plus some cut aparts. It's not so bad. Remember our first cut? We're going to repeat that. So it's 11 and 3 quarters, 9 and 3 quarters, and 6. That's a nice easy one. Rotate the 6 by 12. We'll cut at 8 and 4. Okay, take one of these four by sixes you just made and pop that in uh, file five and six, and then these two go in seven and eight. Then take this strip, right now it's three and three quarter by 12. We'll trim at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Gather up those three pieces, seven and eight. There is this tiny little piece here that goes in pocket five and six. This and the narrow little piece 
all goes in five and six together. A lot of people ask, does it matter the order that something is inside the pocket? And no, it does not matter at all. Just put them all in there. Okay, now we have uh, some black planes we need to trim. So I'm just taking, make, make sure you only have one. It's a nice, again, heavyweight cardstock. We'll cut at 11 and three quarters. 11 and a half. 11 and a quarter. So those are tiny pieces. Then scoot all the way down to 10 and a quarter. It's not very far. 10 and a quarter. 9 and a quarter. 8. And you like that one. And 6 and a quarter. Whew, that was a lot. Now rotate this piece so it's horizontal. We'll cut at 8 and a half. And 4 and a quarter. All right, stack the two four and a quarter by six and a quarters you just made. What's nice about this size is that if you had a four by six photo, you could just put it right on top of this without any cropping required. And that goes in pocket three and four. Then take the next rectangle. We'll cut horizontally at six and three. Take the two rectangles, file those in pocket three and four. Then we're gonna take this tiny little piece and we're gonna trim it horizontal. I'm kidding, we're not gonna, this This is your first scrap. Okay, so we'll just circular file that for later. Now we have all these narrow and funny sized strips. So I picked them all up. The widest one right on the top of my stack goes in seven and eight. That big piece is kind of in the way here. Then take two of the next one. So there's gonna be a one and a quarter inch and then a one inch strip. So this one's a little bit smaller. They both go in one and two. All the rest of these strips go in pocket three and four. Hooray! All right, this black plane goes in next. We're almost there. Cut it nine and three quarters. And six and a quarter. That's a uh, uh, common measurement. So is this. Rotate. Cut at eight and a half. And four and a quarter. Gather up the two four and a quarter by six and a quarters seven and eight. Then let's repeat kind of what we did before. We're going to trim this last rectangle horizontally at six and three. That's also a repeat. File these in pocket five and six. And I know, I know it's very disturbing, but here we have another scrap. <laughs> we'll set him aside. Pick up the next three and a half by 12. We'll cut horizontally at eight and four. Stack these three pieces up and file them in pocket three and four. And finally, this wider strip goes in seven and eight. Great work. Okay, now we're going to move on to our cut aparts. And I'm flipping to the first page of our instructions. And we'll just start with this guy right here. And if you get lost, the number that the layouts that each piece will be used on is listed right in the image of our cut apart. So this matches this artwork and each piece of artwork has a number on it so that you can find where the piece will be used. But I will guide you through. Okay, so place this in the trimmer so this cow is on your left, and we got all these words here on the right, and our first cut's gonna be at 11 inches. Then slide down to 10, and nine and a quarter. If you look carefully, you can also see some very soft colored gray marks on the edge of the paper where it gets trimmed. But just if you want, just watch where these measurements are. Eight and a half. Let the pieces pile up without moving them. Six and three quarters. Four and three quarters. And uh, two and three quarters. This is the last one. Now, if possible, try to pick up the entire stack of all the strips plus the one that just we ended with, and we'll just file them like this. So this first one with the cow goes in one and two. Home is where the herd is goes in seven and eight. A good friend, three and four. As a matter of fact, yes, I was raised in a barn. That goes in five and six. I just ordered a chicken and an egg. I'll let you know. Three and four. Then these two green strips, one and two, and then the text, seven and eight. 
one more piece left to trim and all the work is done. Um, this one, the measurements are a little odd. So I want to encourage you to just kind of look for the very faint little mark on the edge of this artwork. I'm not sure if you can see that. We can see all those little registration marks in there. And um, the measurements, I don't know, just got a little messed up, so bear with me. But the first cut you're ma you'll make is like <clears throat> between 10 and an eighth and 10 and a quarter. So it's like 10 and 3 sixteenths. Just separate the, uh, the hay <laughs> from the piece. Then you're gonna move down to like seven and three quarters. I don't know what happened there. I think something just slipped in the design process. It happens. Then four and three quarters. Okay, now rotate so that the word kawabunga is on the right and we'll cut at 10 and a quarter. And six and three quarters. Take this gigantic cow photo mat and we'll put that in pocket seven and eight. He's so cute. And then this piece, I just had so much artwork in the collection, so I ended up using it plain side up. Of course, you could use it printed side up, but to avoid confusion, I'm going to flip this over to the plain side and put it in pocket five and six. Next, let's take this last piece, put it in your trimmer so the word farmer is on the right, and we'll cut it three and three quarter and two and a half. This little journaling prompt goes in pocket one and two. Kawabunga, five and six, and the farmer definition, one and two. Take the next strip, put the sheep on the right, I love you, and we'll cut it nine, and um, some odd measurement, four and five eighths it is. I dream of a better world, well, that goes in five and six. The greatest of all time, three and four. Plain side of the sheep, I love you. That goes in five and six, plain side up to avoid confusion. Let's just trim off this welcome to the funny farm here. This is gonna be at six inches and you can file that in seven and eight. All right, now this next piece we'll place in the trimmer so that the journaling prompts are on the left and we'll cut at two inches. Rotate and cut at three. So the green journaling prompt goes in five and six, and the black frame, three and four. And then you have this planning on going a little hog wild, three and four. And the hay is used in three and four also. To review, <laughs> we did all the trimming of the eight sheets of paper and the cut aparts, and these are the only pieces from this entire kit that will not be used. So, I mean, decide for yourself. You could probably find a home for these on your pages, but I just decided to put those in the circular file. Okay, so I'm gonna separate my, um, I have two little hook and loop dots that kind of help hold my accordion pocket file onto the back of my trimmer. So I always support the accordion pocket file before I move the trimmer because the trimmer is technically holding it up under the lip of the file. Our next step will be to take the remaining pieces of paper that we have sorted, and I want you to put the entire stack of remaining sheets in front of you so that the right edge of the paper is at the center of your workspace, and then slide the top sheet over. Just one sheet here, all the rest of the pieces here. Then I'm gonna to turn to the final page of my instructions. This is page five, and I'm gonna look at layouts seven and eight, and that should be the base papers required for each of these pages. If you're wondering how I knew that, the first two ingredients listed for every layout are the bases. So the black plane is the left base and the mosaic print is the right base. I've sorted out the remaining papers so that if we work backwards, what will be on the top when we're finished doing the dry fit without adhesive phase layout one that will be on the top of the stack so it's really kind of a clever way i developed this over the course of teaching for many years in the classroom having limited space is how i came up with this um file but then this system of sort of laying things out onto the proper page really um helps sort of solidify the whole efficient process okay so now technically everything needed for this layout with the exception of the embellishments is in my hand so I'm gonna consult the picture labeled seven and eight and try to recreate what I see. 
Sometimes it's easiest to start with these longer border strips. They're usually uh, the first layer of things. So I have this mosaic print and then a blue piece that will separate some space for us. On top of that, I'm going to nest this adorable little border strip with all the animal sounds on the farm. <laughs> then I have a photo mat in this spot here and then a vertical mat here. Across the bottom of this page, I have three red squares in a row, which I will adhere later with the help of a grid ruler to help them remain level and evenly spaced. Then across the top, you probably have three little black tags you can add to that. It's really a cute little accent. I'll show you some finishing touches on this. And then the heart is a die cut, so you can push the heart out of the tag. Um, then on the right side, I've got two black photo mats, and we're going to nest them with two red mats. So these were mathematically calculated to be mates. See how they nest together so nicely. Okay, then we have this wide strip going across kind of to, to bring some of the color that's on the left side over to the right side of the page. And then um, we have... Oh, so this one, rather. Okay, so the skinnier one of the two, my apologies, go on the right. And then this should nest. Oh, yes. Lovely. And if you wanted to, you could color these. If you have markers or watercolors, you'd like to add a little life to that, you certainly can do that. Then this should nest onto the blue to give it a little pop. We're also going to be using this adorable cow charm along with another one of these tags. In addition, there are some ribbons added. So I'm going to go to my finished versions of these layouts and show you some finishing touches. Here is layout number eight. Now, you can see here in the background, I've added some of this beautiful checked ribbon that loops around at the back of that border strip. And just I just taped it on the ends there. I've also stapled a little folded piece of ribbon to the top of the cut apart. Next, I added some of the black jute to the top of this tag and um just i just glued the charm on there as well so that's just uh, adhered with club scraps awesome book binding glue which is wonderful for attaching metal objects to paper and so on it also paper to paper <laughs> okay then on layout seven i have everything pretty much laid out the way i showed you you can tell how nice and level this is I'm, i'll show you my ruler trick so basically when I adhere something, I do have a terrible tendency of gluing downhill. So I just use my ruler and my ruler has a zero center. So I center the ruler on the paper so I get a reading of six and six on each side. And then the first piece I attach is the middle one. So the red middle piece was attached um, initially to establish the center and then the other two pieces left and right of that and if you study this you can see I actually have a sixteenth of an inch between everything on that situation and how nice and level and professional is that um, maybe the ruler is like no mm -mm, not going to be doing that sorry and that's okay but sometimes people like to know how I make that happen and it's a good tip okay we're going to slide now we're going to slide and stack so grab only the black base sheet and slide it to the right and stack it on top of eight. Now take one green slide and stack. Next, remove the contents of everything in pocket five. That's pocket five and six rather. And this large <laughs> adorable piece will go flush on the left edge of this, this side. And the not quite as large piece with the little sheep on it goes on the right. Oh, it's so cute. Now you have three photo mats that are kind of on the smaller side. We're going to put those in a row. Same measurement supply here. I use the zero center and a spacing of three sixteenths of an inch, which is a cube and a half on our grid ruler. And that allows for some nice spacing. Then let's delineate the area by adding a little piece of red quarter inch paper along there. And, um, oh, my apologies, I forgot to add. We have this nested strip, and it actually goes behind. There's nothing here, so I could add that behind that mat. Um, I think there is also a very skinny black strip that might be misfiled. And that's the advantage of 
dry fitting first. Like I know there's a missing piece there. We can go back and find it later. Then we have this white square. And then I have a small tip for you. So sometimes I get really creative about the way I use my scraps. So I just take scissors and cut a little uh, V into the scrap. And that, I can even just tear a little bit off, that fits right behind this white piece. <laughs> Look at that, so cute. And then we can accent that with one of the wood hellos. I also use our bookbinding glue to attach things like that. On the bottom of the page, we have this adorable little cut apart. And I'll show you a trick for that in a second. At the top, I've also added some jute fiber to the barn charm and placed that right here. Once again, adhered with our glue. Then the, the plain side of the hay there, or hay, plain side, facing up. There should be a, a blue square that matches the width. And then it's another red scrap that would have been a scrap, but it's not. So I'll just cut a small piece into that and place that there. Cowabunga, I rounded the corners of that. <laughs> and then this little journaling guy. So lots of cute stuff happening. Oh my goodness, I love this. Okay, then we have this piece here. This is gonna be blue nested with red and then two black smaller mats fit in there beautifully. I did some checking and I did discover that I filed all three of the skinny little black pieces into pocket three and four when it is listed and one of them gets filed in five and six. My apologies. Um, there it is. So if it's filed in three and four, you can go ahead and dig that out and add the black quarter inch strip beneath here again to just carry over the black color to each side of this layout. It kind of adds just a little bit of balance and a little bit really makes a difference even if it's a quarter of an inch of a piece. <laughs> okay, for, for the review now, the finished layout, I did some kind of special things here. Um, there's the, the jute wrapped barn charm. You can see that this square piece is behind the ear of the sheep and uh, what I did was um, placed the mat where I wanted it to be, marked on the base paper where uh, that met the image, and then I used a craft knife to cut around it. I think since this is not attached, I'm gonna quick show you how that works. I did it several times in this collection. You'll need a cutting mat. I love our Club Scrap Self-Healing cutting mat, um, a pencil, and a craft knife. So here's what I did. You'll have to sort of figure out where you want this square piece to live. So I, I tend to do this kind of toward the end of my assembly process. And I'm gonna put it like right about there and I'm sort of comparing to my original. So let's just say I wanted it to, it'll end up being right there on this piece. So here's my sheep. I'll make a mark here where the image meets the mat and then another one here where the image meets the mat. So this is the area that needs to be cut. I'll start at this mark. I have a nice sharp blade in my craft knife. I think that's the mistake a lot of people make when they try to use a craft knife and they are unsuccessful. It's because um, the blade hasn't been changed in years, baby. <laughs> so I'm just making my way around his ear and then always rotating the paper so I'm working in a comfortable position. And then there's my other pencil mark. Now if I just pull a little, I can make sure that that ear <laughs> is um, available <laughs> and then he can shove right into place there. I actually did the same thing down at the lower section. I placed it, I marked it, and I cut around the little leg of this guy as well so that this could be in the fore or this could be in the foreground just in the corner. I'll show you again on my finished sample. And here that is. So I just cut from here to there and I could slide that in. Here's the mistake that I made, and you have the benefit of hindsight, is I attached this before I did the cutting. Um, it's far better if you don't have to cut through two layers of paper, which I did in this case, and it just made it a lot more difficult. So cut first, if you wanna do this, do it before you attach this to the base paper. And the other layout, I have 
done the same exact thing with Mr. Pig here. I could have done it with the horse, but I was going a little overboard with all that. Um, so I just left it at this guy. And it, that's pretty cute, right? And then down over here, just some touches, little things that just kick it up a notch. I rounded the right corner of the cowabunga piece with a corner chomper, just on a quarter inch setting and stuck it in so I would could even out my spacing to match this. And then I also rounded the corner of my red piece so that um, it would just kind of match what was happening here. Just kind of a, just a cool effect, easy to do, but adds a little special touch. Okay, now another s uh, slide and stack session here. So take only the green paper, pick it up, stack it on top of the previous page, then bring one red over and now you should have a base of two reds and that should match the plan for layouts three and four. Then go into your accordion pocket file and we'll take everything out that we filed into the three and four pocket except for that one piece of black. <laughs> so once you kind of figure out where the print was trimmed you can put the narrower part on the left and the wider part on the right and then I think this piece is good to go. We'll um, separate the color areas with a thin strip of black paper. Then we're going to do a fun little double matted set of uh, rectangles on the side here. One, two, three. And the spacing is one sixteenth of an inch with the grid ruler and you can be nice and level and evenly spaced. It's going to be lovely. Okay. Then on this side, we have some border strips we want to get in place first. So I think we're going to start with this. A good friend is one that thinks you're a good egg, even if you're half cracked. <laughs> Let's run this hay across all the way. Then a little spacer of blue. Then a nested black strip. I ordered a chicken and an egg from Amazon. I'll let you know. Down at the bottom planning on going a little hog wild. Look how it fits in there. Like perfection. At an angle, we got a black photo mat nested with some blue. Got another blue down over here. This gr greatest of all time paired with a journaling prompt. And then you have two other pieces that will match the height nicely. Mm, mm, mm. It, I just love how this comes together like a perfect little puzzle. Let's talk finishing touches. On the right side, not much to not much to tell. I wrapped this with some jute um, just a couple of times and tied it in a knot. And then you can see how that's just so nicely attached. It defines the space where these pieces live. Then on the other side, some fun touches here. Follow through with the rounder. As soon as I, as long as I had the corner chomper out, I. Um, cut the corners here at a quarter inch setting, stapled some folded red ribbon to the right side, and then tied some jute onto the charm. And what that jute does is just draws the eye to it. It makes it a little bit more visible on the page. Next, let's go ahead and slide and stack. And we have arrived at layouts one and two. It's hard to believe how quickly these pages can come together. I mean, I think for a lot of people, they often spend this much time on one double page spread and now you've got eight done and this is the waste. I guess this is considered waste too. I'm sure we could find a home for that, no problem. Okay, so we're gonna start, we'll put that large piece on the right edge here. Oh, but first we should probably add, we have some border strips to work with here. Okay, so find the green strip that has the words think happy be happy. And that's going to be placed underneath this vertical border. Then if you stack all the blue mats in your pocket, you'll find that there are some larger, some not so large, and some smaller. So it's, it's important to know what goes where. Let's take the large one of the larger ones. We're going to put it vertically here and adjust the border strip accordingly. Then take the other largest one and put it horizontally up at the top. Okay, now we should have a small one that fits here and a small one that fits there. Then a medium will fit here. And you'll add a journaling prompt. <laughs> Comes together so nice. Here, the smaller one is going to fit behind the pig and behind the horse with our little cutting magic. Um, this nested strip is going to fit kind of in that area between the sheep and all the rest of the animals. The sheep is kind of being sheepish. <laughs> getting late. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, and then finally a little another little embellishment trick. I just um, once again, I just if I cut the little V, it makes it look more like a ribbon, even though it's made of paper. Then take the red ribbon and slice it. I usually fold in half lengthwise, angle my cut toward the fold, and that gives me a nice quick little swallow's tail. And if you look at this, it just sort of matches up, right? So then I think I ended up like trimming it a little bit. I wrapped I wrapped it around, so I just want to make sure I have enough ribbon. I ended up not needing quite the length of the scrap that I had here. And then this nested ribbon will wrap to the back like that, and you can adhere. And then remember the little farmer guy? You can um, round his corners, and he just is a nice little special touch for this spot right here. Mm -mm -mm. I'm sure I missed, oh, the hello and a tag. You, have a, you should have another black tag. I think you might. That goes here with the hello. If you don't, just, it'll be fine. <laughs> I can't remember how many tags were issued. It could be four, it could be five. This layout also includes one of the barn charms here in the lower corner. So let's take a look at those finished pages. I also added, I'm not sure if you could see it in the instructions quite as clearly, but below this Think Happy Be Happy, I was able to spec some of this really fun stitch edged or saddle stitched ribbon, stapled it also to the top of the tag and added the hello with our bookbinding glue. Here's some jute topped charm and then a stapled ribbon on the right edge of the journaling prompt. Then on the left side, here you can see that really fun embellishment. Looks like I just snipped it off. I didn't wrap it around. Either way, I only rounded the right corners. Just kind of gives it a little something. And I attached it with foam adhesive. You can see my fancy cutting work around here, the horse, and then around the pig. Everything else is in the background. Here's the back of my paper. I just took some washi tape to secure those areas a little bit more neatly, prevent them from getting caught when I'm sliding this into a page protector. Okay, so now that your pages are dry fit, the final steps would be, we'll just do a little stack here. You can stack this, slide it back into the bag that your kit came in, and work on it later when you don't have to concentrate so hard. So imagine with me that you took this and maybe a few other club scrap kits and you got them all this far, slid them back into the bag, and then you got invited to a crop when we can do that together again. And you pull out all of your prepped pages and you sit there with your adhesive and you and your tape and you just go like crazy and assemble. And then when they ask how many layouts you finished, you can say proudly, oh, I did like 50. And then all you have to bring is another brick of pictures and add the pictures to the layouts and you're gonna be just feeling so good about your accomplishments. So that's the method. If you're new, welcome to Club Scrap. I hope that um, this has intrigued you. And the best test of this method is to finish those pages, add photos and see how wonderfully, no matter what collection we release, it will just fit into whatever reason or season you happen to be scrapbooking. And um, please reach out to us if you have any questions. Make sure you follow us on our social media channels. We also have a private Facebook chat group. Love to have you join us there as well and share so we can cheer on your accomplishments. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for joining me.